I'm clicking on Drone Nation here. So. We are live, Marcus. Uh, hello, everyone. And before I uh, start the show off here, um, I, I just want to uh, have everybody uh, give a moment a, a moment of silence for our, our friend Rick Halber, who, who passed away a few days ago. Rick had suffered from uh, you know a, a, you know an, an illness for a while. He hadn't been well, so uh, he was a great friend of many in the drone community. He was one of the early you know, subscribers to my channel and supporter. And he supported, you know, the, you know, live shows, you recorded videos. And and he's not only did he support the big channels like Kelly Scherzer over at Zed Road, he supported all the little channels too. So just a special man in the community. So let's we'll just give Rick a moment of silence. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for that. So, um, okay, we're going to move on to the uh, the big show tonight, the Drove Nation. We call this uh, the Florida or Bust Edition. A lot of us are packing our bags, getting our gear ready for uh, this coming Saturday, the big uh, uh, drone uh, meetup in uh, Sebastian, Florida, kind of hosted and organized by our good friend, Captain Ray Kelly. So I just wanted to get that plug in. If you, you don't need tickets or anything, so if you still want to hop a plane, train, Get in your car, drive down. You're welcome to the details. Boat, boat, boat can all be had over at, at, on, on Facebook. So, um, and one other shout out before I start the show here, I want to shout out uh, Billy Kyle, a, a good friend of uh, many of us, and and lots of big fans of his channel. He just reached his hundred thousand subscriber count just the last couple of days. So, uh, uh, good job, Billy. Congratulations, well earned. You put the work in, buddy. Congratulations, Billy. That's amazing. And yeah, he is going to be right after our show tonight. He's going to be on with Sean Oz. So uh, we'll all want to tune in. Uh, as soon as we're done with uh, Donation, you'll want to tune in over there on uh, yeah. on Oz's show. Don't miss it, folks. Yeah. So um, I, I'm going to throw it over to my co-host, Marcus Down. We're going to catch up with uh, how he's doing. He, he's got a little bit of good news to tell you here uh, just from the other day. Right, Marcus? I do. Right there it is. Ah, uh, you got your card. Gosh darn, got that card. I've already got the appointment for the for the second shot. Uh, and I do want to say that all you guys out there that have already had your injection or you're about to get your jab, as the as the British say, uh, all the cool kids get the Pfizer vaccine. I, I, I'm just saying, all the cool people get the Pfizer. I had no option. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I would get to the point, Mark, as you walk in at your doctor's office or your drugstore and they say, well, what do you want? Pfizer, uh, uh, Johnson, Johnson, or what, how do you say the other one? Mon, 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 Mon something. How do you say the, the third one? Uh, Moderna. Moderna. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if you yeah, ever yeah. Walk in, they have all three needles lined up. You say, eh, I'll take uh, this one. Yeah. I, I'll bet you they will because they're, they're saying that even within, by summer, they could literally have a vaccine glut, uh, which is good. I mean, I, well, in some ways it's good because we certainly want everybody to get uh, vaccinated. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, okay, folks. Uh, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, but this isn't the COVID show, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know we got a lot of topics to go through today. We got a hot topic that we'll probably save until last. Uh, some rumors just popped up. Our, our good buddy, the sea level on Twitter, Twitter dropped another, uh, 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 we'll say, nuclear bomb uh, uh, overnight. And uh, uh, anyhow, we'll get to that story in a little while because we don't want to get bogged down. Um, Marcus, what's the, the first, what's the first story you want to talk about tonight and what's on the list? Uh, well, uh, Ron... Why don't you uh, kind of let's d go ahead and dive into your Florida trip and kind of get everybody up to speed on that? If there's any more that you need to, to um, no, I think you know, I just want to announce it. And you know, I think I don't think there's any updates since Ray's been on last week, so um, you know, uh, I, I think if anybody has any questions in chat, we'll definitely try to cover them, but uh, otherwise, I, I think we're, we're pretty current. How about this, Marcus? We both released videos in the past couple days. Um, I don't. Did we announce this last week? There was a a, a firmware update to the uh, DJI Mini Two, and uh, what was notable about this firmware update is it allowed you to. Uh, I don't know if you would turn or y'all would be the proper turn when you're returning to home mode now. Uh, 
on the way back, you don't have to face yourself on the way back. You can turn that camera y'all around again and you can see any direction you want to, which is kind of a big uh, a big thing because if you're, you know, the reason you were flying in the direction was because something maybe was interesting out there. So when it turns and faces you on the way back, you're maybe you're missing the subject. And Mark, is this so important? I, I had my uh, Mavic 2 Pro today, and guess what? The Mavic 2 Pro can't do this, Marcus. Really? I, I, I tried I it. I, I, hit, I purposely hit return to home, and I could not turn or y'all that camera on the way back. So, yeah, I was trying to remember if it uh, did or not, uh, Ron. It, 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 well, I, I can tell you for sure. Mine did not the other day. As yeah. far as I know, I'm on the most current firmware and the most current version of the Android app on the smart controller. And I need to try with the Mavic Air 2 as well. I don't know if anybody in the chat knows, because I, I can't remember, Ron. Can you can you yaw the bird while it's in RTH? Yeah, I mean, I, it's one of those things, I, I you know, I, some drones can, some drones can't, but I cannot. Re I, I fly too many drones. I cannot remember until I get until Dude, I get it out there and try. It. I, I hear you. I hear. There's a first world problem, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, both of us tested it, and I saw your video today, and and like me, you had uh, no issues on swinging that camera around on the return home process. Yeah, it's really cool. It, it's a neat thing. So you kind of have to think of it as line fly. You remember the Phantom 4s had that line mm -hmm. fly that you could use and I think the original the the original uh, uh, Mavic did as well. But in any case, uh, yeah, to be able to point that camera where you want it to when it's on the vector back is really handy as heck and is going to allow you to get just more more scenic stuff. Yeah. So if you haven't done this firmware update, I think it, it had the other typical thing. Like I think it it it, it did two other minor things too. But um, I mean, the update seems solid for me, Marcus. I didn't know notice any downsides at all. Everything else functioned properly. And um, I think you might recall, right? I, I think it asked. I think it asked me to do a firmware update. Um, you know, the, fir the first time I flew it after the, after the firmware day, I mean, it required me to do a compass calibration. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. And uh, cause somebody asked me that, and I don't think I, I don't know if I said that in the video, but uh, it did make me do a compass calibration at first. And some people, some people always do a compass and a IMU after a firmware update. And I do lots of times too, but this, I do lots of times when I think it's a big a big update, but when it's a small when I think it's a small update, I don't always do it. And I know Mark, you pretty much just go whatever the whatever the drone tells you to do, you do right. Typically, I do, but I will put that caveat in there, Ron. That just like you, if if it's a big major update, yeah, a lot of times I'll I'll I'll, I'll do all those uh, calibrations again, just just to make your, sure you're good, but. Uh, really, I think you can kind of rely on the fact that, uh, particularly with DJI, the drone will tell you if it needs a calibration. And when you go into that safety screen, which is really handy on the uh, uh, the Fly app, it, it tell it, it'll just tell you what the drone needs, and and so that's the way to go. I was going to just remind you, Ron, that we did that update live on the air on on my little mini two. <laughs> oh, what well, on a um. Well, on a, was that was was that on that was, a, was that on Facebook? Yeah, that was a Facebook pop up. Yeah, yeah. F folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, Facebook has a new like feature called chat rooms or whatever. And once in a while, you'll see Marcus High pop up live in in uh, the in the Drone Nation um, Facebook group with a kind of a pop up live show. Uh, so you know, be on the lookout for those things in the future. You see some neat stuff, and and you you did that. And did I update something on the one before that, like live yeah. on the air? Remember, like I, I know I'm trying to remember. I, I, update update something. Update I can't remember what it was, but I did do an update. Uh, you know, like uh, in a previous one. So w w watch out, watch out for those things. And speaking of updates, I don't think you've got a chance to do it yet. But the Scudio Two drone, God, they don't call a firmware update; they call it a software update, and that kind of makes sense, Marcus, because the the Scudio is more of a computer than it is a a drone. So they call it a software update. I, it was just bug fixes. It didn't even. I don't think it even mentioned any particular thing it did outside of of, uh, uh, of bug updates. But I performed. I, I I did I did the upgrade and it did upgrade the app just just the you know the drone itself and I flew it and it didn't have any caveats. Everything seemed to be 
working perfectly. Yeah, yours. I saw your video, Ron. It looked like it worked just fine. Hey, I also wanted to bring up, Ron, that just before the show, I watched uh, our friend uh, Mikey at Philly Drone Life, his video with the meetup that uh, you and he uh, and Sharon did at uh, Lucy the Elephant, and and Mikey flew the uh, FPV drone. Uh, that sounded like a lot of fun. And, I mean, I'm telling you, looking at the video, it looked like a lot of fun. It was my first time seeing it in person and seeing it take right. off. So, you know, it's a it's definitely an impressive little drone, and uh, Mikey's got a real handle on flying it already. So, you know, and he, he really, you know, showed me everything about it, and, um, you know, it was just a, a good day. And it was a little bit it was a little bit windy that day, but that thing is, um, you know, that thing's better in the wind than any of our uh, uh, camera birds. You know what impressed me, Ron, is when he landed it right on that picnic table that you guys – I mean, think about that and that kind of wind. That's let me tell you, that guy's a pilot. He's a real pilot. He can handle a he can handle a drone. He, he sure can. I mean, he you know he's um, it's kind of almost a ready made drone for him. But uh, I, I got some nice GoPro video, and I'm sure Mikey will have more. He must have got some fantastic footage that day. So uh, you know, I, I I didn't get a chance to see the video yet, but. He he got definitely got some good stuff. So before we move on, we got no lots of time tonight here. What's I'm gonna run through the chat, uh, Marcus, and shout everybody out. What do you think? Sure. We got uh, uh, you know uh, help me if I miss anybody. It's, I'm going all scrolling all the way back to the beginning. Sammy Burns, hello Sam. We got Michael Blade in here. I think Mikey's coming. Down, Michael Blade's coming down to uh, the meetup with us. Ray Kelly, of course, is hosting the uh, event. Uh, Dr. Ted Bowman's in here with us. Matt Condolf's in here with us. Matt, of course, is going to the event. Giant Joe Flyer is uh, going to the event. Also, uh, Adrian Mateo Drones uh, is also going to the event. Uh, Gary Bauer, I do not know if he's Gary's going or not. Ray Kelly, Adrian, Matt, um, uh, JS Kenner Prize, welcome, welcome in. Uh, Leonard Oglesby, welcome in. Fly, Fly Zone Quadcopters, I think, I think Michael from Fly Zone's going. Um, uh, let's see here. Coast to Coast Drones, Bill Thomas is in the house, Ron. Coast to Coast, welcome, Bill. Scott uh, Nadu, Scott Nadu's here. Uh, and FSU grads in here, and I got another programming note. Uh, that's DeMarco brilliant. Moore. DeMarco will be co-hosting the show. Next that's it. Yeah. He will be co-hosting next week's show with, with Marcus. Um, I, I will. If, I hope I can be on the show. I'm going to be in Florida. I hope I'm on the internet. If I'm on the show, I'll be a guest, but DeMarco will be the co-host next week with uh, uh, Marcus. And I'll be a, hopefully I'm a live reporter on, on the scene. Hey, uh, hey, hey, DeMarco, we can handle it, buddy. You and me, we can handle it. We we, we pay top dollar, DeMarco. So, <laughs> uh, Mike Kitty's in here. What is uh, Mike? Is uh, Mike is going down to the uh, the big Florida drone meetup? Um, let me keep going here. Patrick Sutton's in the house. Oh, here's, here's TX Arch drone guy. That's uh, Mike Wright. Mike Wright's going. He's got a whole suitcase yeah. packed with drones. John uh, Olson's in the house. Drone Masters in here. Did you get drone? Greg Pittman's in here. Did we uh, know Stephen Ewing? How could we forget Stephen Ewing? Uh, you're, you're way ahead of me at this point, but uh, yeah. I, I want to uh, shout out to Greg Pittman. He, uh, in Drone Nation Facebook group, he already posted a uh, a video on on a short a drone we're going to be talking about in a few minutes here. The uh, Mavic, I mean, DJI Air 2S. So. Uh, Grace got a video. He posted a video to somebody else. Hey, hey, uh, Ron, drone guy is asking if he is chopped liver. I thought I said drone guy. Well, if we didn't, we're going to say it again, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I said drone guy, but I was probably talking fast. <laughs> Sorry, drone guy. Oh, how about Hot Rod Daytona? Of course, how can Hot Rod Daytona? You know he's coming to the event, uh, the drone meetup. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we're kind of caught up here a little bit. Hey, Ron, so I got uh, uh, some kind of news for you. Uh, I just actually just probably about an hour ago, I clicked the buy button on that new uh, uh, Insta360 Go 2. Uh, and, 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 and who who predicted that that uh, device would show up on last week's Drone Nation show? I, I, who, who, I, I, said, who said live on air that we would be seeing it sometime last week? 
if 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 anybody has any doubt, that that's who. It's right there, <laughs> Mr. Ron Thomas Brown. <laughs> With all my inside connections in the industry, yeah, that I don't have some some. Let me let me see. Some on the internet told me, but uh, you know, yes, and uh, I mean, there's, I mean, of course, the day it came out, all the big channels had reviews of it, and yeah. I mean, I, I mean, oh, they almost all loved it, and and a lot of the side by side comparison is stacked up very well against the uh, the hero uh, hero nine. Well, of course, it's lower resolution, uh, which is understandable, I think, for its size, right. Uh, so, and they were making they were making the point in the comparison. It is lower resolution, but it was kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it looked good. Well, so that's kind of the point for me, Ron, is to be able to uh, use it as a hat cam, etc. I don't know anybody in here if you've tried using a full size GoPro or the Osmo Action and you put it on the bill of a of a hat, or even I've even got one of those that has the clip that goes on there. It gets kind of heavy and it keeps lowering on your head. So I'm hoping that this thing will be a little bit lighter. Uh, the other uh, thing that I think is kind of appealing is that magnetic deal that they have where you can click it under your chest, right? It's just a little kind of a, uh, a pendant. A, ne a necklace, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got a square magnetic end, and it, and it clicks on that, uh, which I think could also come in handy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm after, Ron. Now, listen, on the downside, I'm going to say this. I believe it's probably a hundred dollars too expensive. It's two hundred ninety nine bucks, which is a lot of money, you know. But I think a hundred dollars more than to go one. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I would have been way more comfortable if it was a uh, uh, hundred ninety nine. But I'm hoping that it'll bring enough to the table that'll be uh, that'll be worth it. Hey, real quick, we got Doc Murdoch in the house with us. And Doc, uh, as far as I know, Doc is coming to the Great Florida Drone Meetup and probably bringing a whole carload of FPV drones. So, uh, you know, it'll be it'll be good to hear Doc's take on the uh, DJI FPV drone also. Well, well, it will, Ron. And you you just made me think of something. I mean, obviously, when we met Doc at uh, Spin Up in 2019, it was so impressive uh, watching what he was doing with uh, – with with his drones and it made me think that this new dji fpv drone has it's probably helped the fpv community as well even if no, nobody in that community wants to buy the dj fpv drone it's raised awareness of fpv to the point that i suspect it'll be even more popular i mean there in other words there will be more people building their own fpv drones and and flying them is would be my suspicion. I agree. I also I want to welcome in John Olson if we didn't say him earlier. Uh, and, and you know, I, I wonder, Marcus, if with the success of the, um, I, I want to go back to the go the the go here in a second here. But I, I wonder if the DJI, if they, you know, we'll see success. I mean, I know it's selling well now, but if it, it's if, if it's still selling well a couple months down the road, um, you know, maybe other companies will attempt to uh, copy it as a, you know make their own versions of a GPS um, based um, FPV drone and, and maybe they'll actually kind of create a new, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of a new, almost a new hybrid drone, uh, if you would say into the market, you know, with more than one company making such a drone. Yeah. I think that's very, very, very possible, Ron. I suspect, you know, like you said, depending on the success of it, it's one thing that you have to say about DJI is they need, they leave, uh, no stone uh, unturned, so to speak. Right, right. Uh, I, back to the uh, uh, Insta three hundred and sixty Go. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I knew the first Insta three hundred and sixty Go. I know people put it on their FPV drones to get video. But you know what? I never thought of Marcus. I thought Insta three hundred and sixty only made three hundred and sixty cameras. I did not know that they made a, a, a just a, a standard action camera. So I mean, again. I never paid attention to the first one enough to know that it, it did, did not actually do 360. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they do have that, that modular thing. I think they have a version of it, right? That's just an, well, that, that's that R whatever the, yeah, the R one, which yeah, that, yeah, right. Oh, right. They I did not know that they, did, they, they made something that totally, that did in any way do the 360 video. Hey yeah. Rob, I, while we're on it, I'm going to, I'm going to look on here. Yeah. Uh, it's one R. 
So they got this thing called the SMO 4K Action Cam for FPVs. So that's the one. Is that the one you're thinking of? Yeah, the one that came out over a year old where you could, you could, you know, you get modules to make it into it. Oh, yeah. So the one on. Camera or, or yeah. a 360 camera, or you could even get a module to, um, you know, uh, make it into a, a one in sensor camera. Yes, yes, yes. That's the one R. Now, also, uh, and I actually got to see that at CES. It was pretty cool. Right, right. But, but the one that's getting a lot of attention right now is they built the one. For this, this especially that is really narrow and it's especially made for uh, FPV drones. That you, it's an action camera that's built specifically to mount. So you know, there's all these people that are decasing their GoPros and stuff to to put them uh, on FPV drones. Uh, Insta360 is now making one with that in mind. Cool, cool. Yeah, so I mean, when I saw this go to come out too, I was all, I was ready to jump on a bandwagon order too, uh, but you know, but then I got I got thinking, then I talked myself back to it. Now nah, I'm just gonna wait and guess the Insta 360 one X two. Uh, it's hard to say the the big name. That's a real 360 camera, and and you know, which seems kind of pricey, but it's only about a hundred dollars more than the the go, and it's oh, much. Yeah. More it's much more capable because it could be a it could be an action camera or a 360 camera. Yeah. Uh, th well, and like I said, the main reason that I got this go to is quite yeah. frankly because of the size. Oh, so now I you watch you watch. It's the neatest little thing the way it comes in that case. You control it with the case. I mean, it's a great little piece of technology. I mean, I want it more because it's a. It looks like it's a well thought out. It looks like you know. It looks like you're iPods case or whatever. Yeah, 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 it's such a great piece of technology that even if I didn't need it, I'd like it. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact, Ron. Yeah. Hey, so Ron, you're talking about new products and 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 talking about if companies will kind of follow on uh, DJI's coattails with the FPV drone. The other thing that uh, you and I have speculated a lot in private is. You know, we and there's been a lot of talk about Femi coming out with a Femi Mini. I, that sub 250 gram drone product, I just think it's going to be a big deal. And e e not even so much in the U.S., but in other countries, it's a big deal to them now in Europe. Uh, and it's a big deal in Canada to get that under 250 grams. So it's going to make sense to me that other companies follow in their footsteps uh, what do you think about uh, an Autel uh, Mini? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we've heard rumors about an Autel Mini. We also hear rumors about the smart controller for the, uh, you know, the Evo 2 series. But we keep hearing this Mini rumors a lot, too. And we were speculating, like, who would they, what drone would they really go after here? Would they make also make a, a sub-250 gram drone and go after the um, the DJI, um, you know, Mini 2? Or or would they make or they make a little bit bigger drone and go after the Air Two, which um, the Air Two since there's we're we'll gonna get to the story next since there's rumors of a new Air Two coming out after just one year, obviously that must be a good seller too. So um, you know, going after either market uh, could probably be uh, wise for them. And uh, my speculation, I don't know how they could up the you know the Mini Two. And stay sub sub two hundred and fifty grams, and even stay sub four hundred forty nine in price point. I could see him going after the Air Two a little bit more easily. Uh, it would either make it something a little bit better, possibly optical avoidance sensors. Uh, you know, uh, uh, more optical avoidance sensors maybe all around, and uh, maybe a better camera, or just going a little cheaper. Uh, but Marcus, you had a little bit different take than I did on this. Well, yeah. So I think that that sub. 250 gram uh, is such a huge market and is going to continue. It's, I think it's only going to grow. And and uh, Hot Rod in Daytona is pointing out that there's not much margin in the sub 250 range. And I, I think that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it's such a mass market that there's room for competitors, even if they don't really exceed what DJI is. I think there's there's people out there that would buy it just to as an alternative to DJI, but how easy would it to hang their hat on something like Ron say 
say if they put some kind of tracking on their GPS tracking or optical tracking uh, on on a drone to kind of differentiate their product, uh, you know, that, that might be a good calling card from them. And I just think it's such a big market. W whether we see Autel do it or not, uh, we, we, know, we know we're going to see one from Femi, and I bet we do from a lot of other companies. But your point is well taken, Ron. They could probably, it would probably be easier for them to differentiate themselves in that next grade up. And they're also, just as Hot Rod and Daytona suggests, there's more margin in that next size drone, too. So, right. And uh, DJI, kind of DJI, yeah, and they're never going to do the volume DJI is. So, they make, make money in the sub 250. You got to do a lot, lot of volume. Do you see Michael from Fly Zone saying, I think a few more weeks and we'll have a Phoebe Mini? The Phoebe Mini will be here in April, is what I'm told. Yeah. Yeah, all right. my contacts are telling me in April that's when we're going to see that drone. So, uh, and that'll be interesting. I hope, uh, you know, I hope Femi uh, has developed it better than some of the drones that we've seen from them in the past. Uh, you know, I hope it's a lot more sound. And the price point will be interesting. And now I'm talking about the Femi, not Autel. The price point on the Femi, uh, I think, is going to have to be pretty aggressive. And it probably will be because that's been kind of Femi's track record in the past. As you know, Ron, we bought our original, when we bought our, uh, uh, well, the, the Femi X8 SE, uh, that was about uh, 350 bucks, I think, when that uh, initially came out, which is just, uh, you know, you think about that, 350 bucks for that drone is, is not much. So could they come out with a mini drone in the $200 range? That would be something, wouldn't it? Right. I mean, even if they came out in a three hundred dollar range and 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 a, you know, and it worked real good. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which, which, is, which is no reason to think it won't work well. It's just that again, it, but it can't have like a, a it can't have a fatal flaw like a, 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 you know a perpetually crooked horizon or a, a now I'm alluding to the Zeno or a lens flare issue. It, it can't be. Mostly right, but have one thing that just always holds it back. And, and I have to tell you, that has been Femi's history, uh, Ron. The the original Femi 4K drone, I bought that thing, and it, it was the one that looked kind of like a Phantom. Uh, that thing had flyaway issues, connection issues. Uh, people had all kinds of problems with those. Fortunately, I didn't with mine. I had the connection issues. I mean, that thing could be... 200 feet in front of you and it would lose connection and it, and it you know, they never really fixed that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Femi a three is, a you know, that thing had the problem with, as you would take it up, the lens would fog up. They didn't, they didn't seal that lens correctly. So you get fogging. The other problem with that one was the, you, it, it had a built in FPV screen on the controller which was br not bright enough. Even in the shade, you couldn't see it, and you couldn't tell how much battery you had left. As good looking of a drone it was, it was problematic enough that it. Would, and then of course we get to the X8SE, which is uh, in 2018. I've got both versions: the 18 version and the 20 version. I quite frankly like the 2018 version better, Ron. I think I get better video out of it than the 2020 version. My 2020 version, I've never been happy with the video. And you put that in conjunction with that tilted horizon. And trust me, people that say they have a cure for that, they don't. <laughs> I've tried I've tried every kind of calibration and all that stuff. And that, that you, you can get it to work for a while, but it, but it always comes back. Fly the drone sideways and see what happens to your horizon. So, so that's kind of Feeney's history. And, and it's close, but no cigar. You, you pick up that controller on the Femi. It feels good. It's got good flight controls on it. The drone feels like it's pretty good quality. But just as you suggested, Ron, it always has some issue that, uh, that causes, that can be, just create a lot of frustration. So I'm hoping that they have learned that lesson. And like you said, that they, that they have, uh, when they come out with their mini, that it, won't have those kinds of issues. Yeah, I mean, they've taken a good long time to release this. So what I'm hoping is they didn't just kind of like uh, take the technology from the, um, just, just port the technology from the um, 
uh, I, the, the X8 over that they, this is a total like kind of redesign almost from scratch where, the, you know, it doesn't inherit the, you know, the faults of, uh, you know, the older system. I know a lot of people want the controller from the X8 to come over here. I know you're a big fan of the controller, but of course, uh, you know. I like it. Yeah. But, they, but with it, a little dainty drone, they're probably going to redesign a little like a little mini controller, though, too, you would think. Hey, just to, I want to point out, Doc Murdoch is saying that he has the Mi 4K and he doesn't have didn't have any of the problems that that I described. And I, that think Doc had, I think Doc had it spin up. Oh, yeah, I think. May, yeah, that's right. I believe so. Listen, Doc, what I'll say about mine is I got to where I was afraid to fly it because I lost connection so often. And there were so many people that had flyaways with that drone that I was concerned about. it. In fact, our, our friend uh, Ryan over at uh, RD's, uh, it used to be RD's Drone Reviews, and I think it's now it's RD's uh, RC Reviews. Uh, he uh, actually literally had his Mi 4K fall from the sky and I with a battery issue and just destroyed it. Mm. Yeah. So mm. anyway. Yeah. Well, we, we're, we're holding up high hopes for the uh, the Phoebe Mini. We hope it does show up in April, and we hope that it's not one of those pre-order jobs where you, you're basically a Kickstarter and it comes six months later. Yeah. Because now, it, it's really it's really important to release a lot of these drones. In this. If you're dependent on the U.S. market to fuel your, your, you know, your company, you want to release a drone in the, in the six warmer months, not the six colder months. Yeah, not in the middle of winter. Hey, so so Michael at uh, FlyZone Drone or uh, Quadcopters is saying that he feels like he's got his straightened out. I'm going to challenge you a little bit, Michael. Fly that drone sideways for a little bit, and then yaw it around and tell me how your how your horizon looks. And listen, I make you. I'm making it sound like I'm down on Femi. I, I, I am on one hand, but on the other hand, I'm not. I'm a big fan of their products because like the Femi X8 SE, I just think had so much potential uh, and I'm just frustrated with that issue that they have never been able to fix with that uh, tilted horizon. And I'm just going to tell you, I, you know, I know he was telling me about zeroing out and doing all the calibrations. I've done all that with the 2018 and the 2020 version. And I've done, I've watched all the YouTube videos of people that do it. I've never been able to fix mine, and I know a lot of other people uh, have not as well. Patrick Sutton is saying that he's disappointed in the 2020 camera, as am I, Patrick. I'm having the issue where it looks like I got a little, one side of it is a little bit out of focus, and there's a whole other fix for that. People are taking the lens cover off, and they're trying to turn the uh, uh, adjustment on the camera you shouldn't have to do that. If you're if you're buying a drone, you should expect it to be in focus and the the, the camera. And and then Matt Cundiff is talking about tweak the, the the little damping balls. I've seen those videos too, Matt, where they they pull one of those little dampers out and all that. I I don't know. All I know is I could buy a DJI drone and I don't have to do any of that crap. <laughs> Hmm. Hey, and we got uh, Bill from Metro Drones in here who, who's attending the uh, Florida Drone Meetup. But Bill sent me a uh, link last week um, to Best Buy. And on the FPV drone, like his review was the very first one on, on Best Buy. You, oh, know, nice. where, 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 you know, like buyers uh, review their product like on Amazon. And, and Bill's was the very first review of the FPV drone on, on, on Best Buy's website. Yeah, that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So congrats, Bill, and I can't wait to see you fly that thing in, in Florida. And and Hot Rod's asked me if I updated the um, Evo two uh, yet. I I did not. Uh, Hot Rod, uh, you know, it's a um, it's a beta, and I have to, you know, and Rod told me to do it. I have to, you know, like you know, uh, download the computer, put the memory card, put the drone, and and being that I'm getting ready to leave for Florida and trying to wrap up a million products, I just didn't have the time to, to do all that. I've never done that before in the Evo. I've done it on the Zeno one many times, but um, I'll just wait until it actually, you know, comes through the app and the and control just cause I don't have the, I don't have the time to uh, uh, mess with it since I'm, uh, you know, like not that far away from being in a car for the next three days. 
Yeah. Well, and the point of it is, if it's still in beta, you know, why, why not just wait till it? Uh, yeah, I, I'm with well, you. Well, we, you and I test live beta out on the uh, on the Xeno One. Yeah, we did, didn't we? We sure did. Yeah, yeah. Of course. And lots, that, of, and, lots of, and lots of you know, and some of those betas were much better than the uh, the, the one before. And um, uh, Rod already has a video, but this uh, on the beta. Now you could do sort of a hyperlapse orbit, which seemed really cool. He did it like around a, a bridge or whatever, the other sample. So it was pretty cool stuff. So now I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the new um, update for the uh, Evo 2. So, yeah, that sounds like a, a pretty clever trick. Uh, yeah, I, I like that, Rod. And you know, not a lot of people show off the Evo two, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, what do you call them, smart modes or whatever. Um, and you know, it, they may not have as many as, uh, say, uh, the DJI drones do or the high level DJI drones do. But you know, I know that I tried a few of them on the beach, and tracking works really good. And uh, you know, I'm gonna try to explore more of those features, uh, uh, smart features of the Evo two once the uh, weather kind of uh, improves around here. So, so on the, the Evo 2, especially the Evo 2 Pro, seems to be getting a lot of traction. You're hearing more and more people uh, buying that drone. Uh, you know, and, and it definitely, I, I get it. it. It looks attractive. And I know the, uh, the 360 obstacle avoidance on it is phenomenal, as is the, the active track that it comes with. Drone shot to say hello to me and you, Marcus. Howdy, drone shots. And I see Chris Wedgworth in the chat, too. How you doing, Chris? Hello, Chris. Um, Ray Kelly says, what does everyone think about the Skydio? Uh, you know, love the Skydio. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like the DJI FPV drone. It's not for everyone, but... Uh, what do we think about the Skydio, Rod? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not for everyone, but uh, it's certainly a fun little drone. It, uh, you know, flies well, has a great camera. The uh, and that's what I'll say. And of course, we've said this a hundred times, Ron. But but the, the camera is the most underrated part of that drone. It, it's a, I just every time I come back and look at the footage that I get with that drone, I'm just blown away by it. It uh, it always just looks so good and it matches up so well with your GoPro. I mean, it's just uh, it's the, 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 there, there's there's one downside to that drone. Well. Some people would say too, but the big downside is the range on the controller, right? We've talked about that a lot. You just don't have enough range, and even more importantly, signal strength with that controller. Uh, and then I know it's important to a lot of people that they don't like that you can't fly it at night, uh, and they say not to in low light. Although, Ron, I know you have some experience with that. Yeah, I, I, I watched a video recently where somebody – they, they, they really waited for the sun to go down. They flew, and they even had it still avoiding obstacles. I, I've never tried avoiding obstacles, but I've, I've flown after the sun has dipped below the horizon, so on the afterglow, and, and it, you know, it never warned me. Because when it gets dark enough, it'll it'll warn you and say it's returning and landing, and I, I never saw it do that. So I mean, you can you can fly after the sun drops below the horizon, but you not for long, you know, uh, but but. Uh, it, it, it you know don't be scared you have to put that thing away before the sun sets um you know again i i wouldn't advise avoiding a whole bunch of obstacles at that point but if you're just fine to get some uh, uh you know some good looking video yeah because again it, yeah marcus says don't think it doesn't have a good camera that uh, that you only you're only ever going to use it to follow yourself in some kind of vehicle even if you're a camera drone guy it takes this takes a real nice video you know, again looks looks a lot like your hero eight or nine well, well, one of the things that you and I noticed the other day is in there, uh, the Skydio has put out a ser series of how-to tutorial videos on that drone. And the one that uh, you and I felt like and kind of dumb at after watching was that we didn't really understand the hover mode on it. You, you know, you, you're going through a, the app and you're thinking hover. Well, hell, what's to hover in a drone? But what they mean by hover mode is that it really can be a, like, a cameraman mode on the uh, 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 on the uh, Paranafi. Paranafi. I couldn't think of Paranafi. Uh, Paranafi. But what the drone will do is say uh, it will do, it will just track you wherever you're at, hovering in in one spot, which nobody tracks like uh, like uh, the Skydio does. So yeah, it's just an interesting 
interesting thing. And it's, it's cool to have that kind of flexibility in the product. Our friend John over the treetop flyer, he says the Evo two obstacle avoidance cannot be beat. I had a LOS and, and, and RTN, the drone encountered a building on the way. I rose 40 feet to clear the roo roof and then I regained signal and it came home. So I, that's very good to hear, John. That's neat. And then also I have heard repeatedly that the, that the tracking on the Evo 2 is just phenomenal. Like, like it's, it's, it's almost to, in Skydio territory that, that, that it can track you very, very well. I but test the track out the beach. Yeah, yeah with obstacle right. avoidance, it does a great job of avoiding obstacles while it's tracking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't avoid any obstacles, but it, it did it did track and track close too. It didn't, you know, it could get real close and track you. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, we got Lon's in here with us. Lon is also going to the uh, Florida Drone Meetup this weekend. So looking forward to meeting Lon. Lon's uh, concurring that the camera is good on the uh, Scudio too. Yep, yep. That's cool. a good thing. And we actually we got Arco Drone Solutions in here with us. Arco is also going to the uh, drone meetup. Of course, that's if he can get shoveled out uh, of his uh, of his development. The Midwest, uh, yeah, they're getting the, the the Mountain West, I should say. They're getting a lot of snow. Oh, Art got uh, buried. I I think that we need to give Art a little bit of credit here. I thought that he had the best name in the world for the Florida meetup he called it the blessed event i'm the just telling you. Event. yeah I forgot about the blessed event somebody needs to put that on a t-shirt that's, that's <laughs> what I, I think that's funny the blessed event. <laughs> yeah. all right guys well we've kind of danced around the subject uh, uh let, let sometime overnight last night our, our friend ocetilev uh, uh the great dgi uh leaker uh leaked the post on on twitter uh uh you know, uh, like drop day, what do you call it? Easter egg about a, a new drone? And this morning, an FCC filing was made uh, for a uh, a DJI Air 2S. No, no Mavic anymore, just DJI Air 2S. And um, you know, so it, a, a patent was filed. That doesn't mean a project will ever show up. But in DJI's case, I think every time they patent a drone, it does actually show up. And um, and usually when the Patents get filed. It means that it's coming in the near future. Um, Josh Spires, a, a good friend of mine over at uh, Drone DJ. If you don't follow Josh, he does an amazing job. He's uh, I think he lives in Australia, but uh, it's, it was a couple articles. But Josh was, was the best, and uh, he talked about uh, it could possibly having a bigger uh, image sensor processing uh, uh, things that could make possibly make the camera better, maybe a little bit better in low light. Um, and a couple, just go read. I, I posted uh, Josh's article on Drone Nation, so go over and read all his, um, you know, all the research he did on it. And he, people even speculated that would have uh, uh, OcuSync 3. And somebody in the chat mentioned that that would probably make it uh, work with the DJI goggles. Well, that's probably the same yeah. protocol. Yeah, yeah. And Bill Thomas a while back had speculated that the, the price for this may be $9.99. I guess he means nine 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 for the the drone and controller on one battery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, boy, it's it's interesting. And the also thing, the other thing that struck me is that they're dropping the Mavic name off of it too, simply calling it the Air Two S. Which uh, I wonder if they're if they're trying to reserve that Mavic name then for that top end drone, the Mavic potential Mavic Three that we keep hearing about. Uh, Lon Dennard is saying no goggles, so sorry, Rod, no goggles, I guess. No goggles. Uh, I mean, it was something in chat. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I don't have the goggles. I mean, uh, I, and I wouldn't buy the goggles just to use with the Mavic, uh, uh, I mean, with the Air 2S anyway, so, but. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, I'm just trying to think what they're going to have to do to get me to move up from my Air 2. I'm really happy with my Air 2 as it is and feel like I've only scratched the surface of its capabilities. So, yeah, I mean, but the, what like we've talked about in the past, DJI always surprises. Yeah, it's got to be something else because uh, Josh mentioned this improved image sensor could maybe take a 64 megabyte photo as opposed to, what is it, is a 48 megabyte that the Air 2 could get? But I mean, really, I mean, uh, I don't know, you know, are you, you know, 
how close did to blow your screw up to see that your your 64 photo is better than your 48 megapixel photo? Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's enough to make you, you know, sell Let's all your you know, sell all your Air Two gear and upgrade to the the threes. Yeah. It's got to be something else in there to to get us. Yeah. Hey, Ray Kelly, I I, I want to bring it up while it's still on the screen here. He's asking uh, colors on the T-shirt. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you, Ray. If it's South Florida, it's most certainly needs to be some kind of pastel color. So that that's what I'll say. I'll try and look for Ray's uh okay, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a, a nice uh mommy vice style shirt, huh? Yeah. And and so Coast to Coast Drones is saying it will work with goggles. So uh and he's saying it how the the pocket the pocket two camera be in the air too. Yeah, yeah. Lon says no and Bill says yeah, but uh and uh, Ron Jovich says, I'll do a grand for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it depended. The thing is, DJI always gives us something that, uh, that, that you know, we just always feel like we have to have, or at least that's typically what happens to me. There's, there's something on there that uh, they, they, put, they end up putting some kind of feature going, well, yeah, I didn't know I needed that, but boy, do I want it, you know? So, uh, yeah. John drove flyer saying, yeah, I, I had to let him know the bad news day. Poor John just purchased the, the air two one. Not too late to send it back, Johnny. <laughs> I think got a 14 day return policy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, so, okay. Then on the bigger picture here. So if we're going to get an air two, you know, when, when, when C Lev starts dropping his, uh, his Easter eggs on uh, Twitter and the filings start happening. That means that you know it's coming in the next couple months. So I guess this means we'll see an Air Two, but we're, before we see a Mavic Three, so that means that probably they, I mean, good chance they don't release them in the same day, same month. So now we just push the Mavic Three back uh, to later summer, fall. Uh, yeah, possibly. The thing is, we, yeah, I mean, how do we know? Maybe the Mavic Three will come before this Air Two. I mean, how do we know? Well, I, I, here's here's something I just thought of too. Okay, the um, the mini the mini two released almost exactly a year after the mini one release. So they follow suit with the air two. We should see the air two at what the end, the very end of April. But it was I, I forget the timeline. They they had that announcement, and then it was two weeks before the drone ship. What when did we when did they first make the air two official? Was that April, early April? Yeah, you know, I'd have to go look. Yeah, so I mean, we're we're not far off. We're we're yeah. within we're within weeks away from the uh, the year anniversary of the of the Air Two arriving. So if they file suit, what they did with the Mini Two, the Air Two S could could be announced in the next couple of weeks. I made mean, official in the next couple of weeks. So and, and I think it took again. It was a pre-order thing and took two weeks to ship out. So most of us got it in, uh, I don't want to say the early, what, middle of April, late April. I, I forget all these timelines. But we had it by the end of April. Yeah, we had it. We've had it nearly a year, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if they file suit. And again, I mean, the Mavic 3 could come tomorrow. Uh, who knows? But, uh, well, actually, it's not coming tomorrow because there's no FCC filing. <coughs> yeah, well, <coughs> pardon me, Ron. I just he got uh, all choked. Sorry, folks. He got all choked <laughs> up about this new this new Air Two S. That means he probably he probably has it somewhere in the back there, or whatever. So that his coffee now means that he's at a DNA, and uh, he wants me to change the subject to yeah. um, the the RoboMaster too. Well, what I just was going to tell you is, I I just checked my bank account to see if my. Uh, uh, stimulus money was in there yet, so I could if I could afford to buy one or not. Okay, <laughs> help help small business owner out. Uh, okay, but uh, but uh, you know so so possibly see it. Uh, I hate to say delay because not even now she can't have a delay in Mavic Three when it's not even a, a real project yet. But you know the timeline the Mavic Three gets pushed back. We talked off the air. We always hear Mavic Three, Mavic Three, but nobody says Mavic Three Pro or whatever. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, will we get, will will there be two Mavic threes? Will there be a Mavic three and I then think, also a Mavic three Pro? Ron, I think you're absolutely right. I suspect we'll see three different versions of the Mavic three. I bet you there'll be a a standard version and there'll be a 
pro version that, you know, you and I could speculate what maybe interchangeable lenses, who knows, right? And then, and then a third version probably for uh, commercial use, uh, institutional use. Uh, so, yeah, and I've, I've heard, Ron, that one of the things that's holding them up is that they, because the, the FAA hasn't set any standards yet for remote ID, they don't want to put it. They don't want to put it out until they know they can. They can make it remote ID compliant, uh, and that's all just rumor. But uh, yeah, who knows? And they don't care about the Air Two S because they know there'll be an Air Three before the before the uh, rules go into effect. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Lon Denner is saying November. Uh, Lon, uh, you evidently got to have a good source there, so that. That sounds about right, but that's going to that's gonna be exactly what Ron says. Okay, let's release a drone right at the beginning of winter so you can't fly it. <laughs> right. I, I mean, you know, uh, maybe they don't care. Maybe the U.S. market's not important to them. Uh, yeah, I don't know, you know. Um, and, I mean, really, okay, I understand, like, the mini being a, a, something you get, Chris, you, you get given as a, a Christmas gift, but nobody's given a 2500 uh, not any, most people aren't given a, 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 you know, a Mavic Air 3 that costs $2,500 a Christmas gift. Most dudes are buying it with their own money, so they don't care what time of year it is. I mean, they, they don't have to wait until Christmas to buy that. Like, Marcus, you and I, I mean, we, you know, we, yeah. you know. That's not a Christmas gifty item. We would buy that on our own. So we'd much rather have that in our hands June 1st than we would December 1st. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, I absolutely would. Hey, I want to uh, see uh, Ted Bowman is here. It's FA supposedly April 21st with final regs. Now, what that is, uh, Ted, is that yeah, explain, they, uh, explain that. I saw that today too, Mark. Yeah. So, so all they're doing is uh, uh, making the rule effective on that date. So, but what they still haven't done is they have not set the standard for remote ID, how it's going to work, what frequencies it transmits on and all that stuff. And, you know, they've got, I guess, two and a half years to do that, right? So so who knows when that will uh, come about. You would think they'd, they'd want to make that sooner rather than later. So I yeah. see uh, uh, Michael uh, TX uh, Arch Drone guy is talking about using the motion controller with his uh, FPV drone. That's interesting. Good to hear Mike's got it out and flying now. I remember he was uh, on the fence whether he was actually going to take it out of the box or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So evidently, evidently, Michael, you took it out of the box. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, That's good. Yeah. Yeah, so so Ron, let me ask you, this uh, Air Two S, uh, what would be the uh, gotta have feature that would make you buy it? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think that over. Uh, I, I guess if the if the camera was significantly better, I mean, I hate to say significantly, but you know, enough of a jump that I thought I would be able to capture more dynamic range, not to sound like our friend Mikey of a Philly drone, but if I could get more dynamic range, more, if, if it does have a, a bigger sensor and they, they gave figures in the article and drone DJ, it would be uh, more capable in low light, um, which, which is always good if you're flying sunsets or sunrises, um, or even in the shadows, if you're flying a, a, a dark side of a building that's in the shadow or something like that. So, um, you know, uh, uh, for me, a significant camera bump. I mean, uh, two or three minutes more flight time, not mean a whole lot to me. A little bit more range, it goes far enough for me already. All this stuff would just be incremental stuff that would not really get my attention. How about this, Marcus? What if they added, um, and I don't want to say 360 obstacle wins, but what if they offered more obstacle wins? I, I would like that because one of the things that holds me up from flying sideways with that drone is not having those sideways sensors. That would be a big deal to me, Ron. But also the other thing that, uh, that Lon brought up that uh, it, it would probably suck me in because, and you know this, Ron, I've talked to you about it. I've never owned a drone with a one inch sensor. Hey, if it had a one inch sensor. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'd probably I'd probably jump on that. Yeah. Just because it's something I've always wanted. That and that's it. I'm not that I'm a big photographer, not any of that, but 
Hmm. It would be something I'd like to mess. I up. would be shocked if they if they would add a one and censor and still keep the praise under a thousand dollars. That would be I would now that would now Marcus Derry would be your thing to buy. Hey, should we guys welcome in Sean Oz? Uh, he's uh, telling Matt that uh, he's getting ready to interview Billy next, and, and and don't worry, Sean. We will send we will get off this thing in the next five or six minutes and send everybody over your way to uh, to to see Billy get it, you interview Billy and congratulate him. For the great job he's done over there and, and reached a hundred thousand uh scarborough county i mean a lot of us have been watching billy since he was you know broadcasted from his bedroom at his his mother's house in westchester so a lot of the, i mean i i know i was following billy at i don't know five six thousand uh subscribers something like that so uh lives go way, way back with no, no doubt and sean we 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 promoted your show right at the top of our show so yeah, I'm open with the whole yeah. The whole crew but, just switch right over. So we're gonna need a we're gonna need a little kickback. Uh, get, yeah, our, yeah, get, our, yeah. get our get our little stimulus check in the mail. We've been promoting you real good here. Hey, before I forget, Ron, uh, 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 Demarco also added another thing that would be interesting, and he's saying OcuSync three, and, and that would be interesting. Right, right. Which which they which you're speculating already. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wanted to bring that up. I thought that was a significant thing that would. Right, they right. could maybe potentially get some people to drop to, to uh, to jump over. So, so we'll you know we'll um you know we'll we'll keep you up on well uh, we'll keep you up on the, on the stuff we read on the internet. We we don't have any inside knowledge. We we don't have these things or whatever. We're just reading stuff on the internet and people and are speculating. People are telling us stuff on yeah. Facebook and so on. So I mean, but you know, uh, the real keys is the. The uh, OC to lab tweets or whatever. I mean, people say could say what you want about him, but he's he's almost like you know he's almost never wrong when he starts these tweets. Hey, drone guy makes a really good point. He goes, "You mean O three? No such thing as Occupy three. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. It, we we we're gonna have to get used to all these new uh, DJI right. naming conventions. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> uh, right." So uh, yeah, um, and who knows? Uh, tomorrow night, Bill, the drone reviewer, he may have more details on this Air 2S. And uh, who knows? Uh, well, I'm going to make a show announcement here, Marcus. Uh, I'll be on. I'll be in a car tomorrow night in the way to Florida. So Marcus is filling my uh, shoes over at uh, the Philly and Ron show tomorrow. So who knows? Philly may have the inside scoop on this new uh, this new 2S drone. You never know what Philly Mike knows, and he may have flown it already. For all we know, Ron. Right. He uh, start asking about it. if he starts like not saying much or whatever. You know, he's uh, he's already seen it and flown it already. Yeah, yeah, very possible. Yeah, Leonard Oglesby is bringing up possibility of a new smart controller. I suppose you never you never know. And, and mm -hmm. let me tell you what I think we could all agree on is that smart controller is something that really needs an update. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Of course, now now you're selling out. If, if it was available for the uh, you know the Air Air Two S, now you're selling out the nine nine nine. Now you're sharing out another. Uh, uh, well, what the old one was what was the old one six nine nine or seven nine nine? Yeah, I think it's six ninety nine. So, so you 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 and they keep the price same. You're selling out another seven. So this is getting real expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I think I, you know, to me, I think it's more important to get the Mavic Three out the door first, or maybe the same day as the uh, smart controller too. Uh, uh, let's not focus on the, you know, let's focus more on getting that Mavic Three out the door than the smart controller too. That's another great point. I don't disagree with that either. Uh, yeah, I, I have to tell you the uh, whatever this two S thing here's air 2s personally i'm a little disappointed in the fact that i was really looking forward to the mavic 3 this summer and so if that pushes it off as lawn says until november well that kind of bums me out uh lawn saying it's 750 let's <clears throat> and part of a bundle is about 400 yeah i couldn't remember ron myself and so yeah so that's good thank you lawn hmm Alrighty, folks, it's 9.58, so we're going to say our goodbyes and let everybody hop over to uh, Sean Oz. Is his challenge called Sean Oz, or does he have a 
big world Oz or what? what yeah, well, hang on here. I'm uh, let me yeah. check the channels here, and I'll tell you here in just a second. Anyhow, you guys all file Sean anyways. You don't need us to. It, 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 it's just his own Sean Oz channel. Billy Kyle interviews the title. So keep it nice and simple, right? Yeah, right. Nice so, um, okay. Now the game, the, the game plan. You will, I, you won't see me streaming the rest week. I'll be, I'll be on the road, and I'll be in Florida by yeah. hopefully Thursday night. Uh, you know, sometime late Thursday. Night. So I'll be date the show Friday at the um, uh, the Captain Hiram's uh, right, right in downtown Sebastian on the Intercoastal. I may even go with – oh, we forgot to mention, old guy in a drill, Mitch went over and did a um, a preview video of the park where – the new park where we're flying at now. Mark has sent me the video. It was a nice video, and he did a little FPV fly another field, but uh, he gave a nice uh, you know, nice overview of the site. So, anyhow, I'll be hanging around on Friday. If anybody's around, hit me up on Facebook or if you – any other way you want to. And uh, and I and I will try to be a guest on the show next Monday here to, to give a little on the on on the site on the go reporting job from uh, how the event went and you know who I saw who I didn't see you know that type of thing and um, and, and I'm sure Mark De, Demarco and Mark's on a big show plan for you otherwise who knows they may have the air to us on the set who knows. Yeah, I mean that you never know. Anything's possible, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Did DeMarco, get, did, did, DeMarco, did DeMarco get that FPV drone? Not that I'm aware of, but he could surprise us. Okay. So just just checking. So, all right, folks. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us in chat tonight. Uh, you know, we had our, you know, the usual group, which means a good group. We had the, we had the best chat group in the business here. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, and for everybody in chat that will be at the meetup, I will see you next Saturday. And uh, Marcus has his car. Marcus, do you have any words of wisdom to leave the folks with? You, you know, I am so happy to – yeah, yeah. Get your, get your vaccination. And that, if I had got that a month ago, I'd be going to Florida. That's what I'll say. There we go. All right. There we go. All right, folks. We'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye now.